Okay. Hi guys. So today we are discussing top 10 Power BI service interview questions. Okay. So first question is Power BI license type. What are the available or what are the common license types in Power BI? Okay. So if you are uh, attending an interview and if they are touching Power BI service part, then this question is mandatory. Power BI free, Power BI pro, Power BI premium and Power BI premium per capacity. These are the four things you can tell. And also you can tell one, one line per each license so for uh, power bi free license it is for personal use and you cannot uh, share anything using that it's just for your own purpose personal use next power bi pro so it is used for sharing and for collaboration you can also schedule refresh on it so all these things you can do using power bi pro next one is power bi premium so power bi premium what happens is it have uh, additional all the things which have in which is there in pro that will be there in power bi premium and along with that you also get some advanced features like the some of the ai enabled features will be there in power bi premium also you have paginated reports that option also will be there in power bi premium Next option is Power BI Premium per capacity. Okay, this is best for large enterprises. Okay, for large companies which uh, which need lo dedicated loud capacity, but they need broader user access. Then uh, Power BI Premium per capacity. So these are the four licenses which are very common. So these four you can tell. Okay, then they will ask one more question. Mostly uh, everybody who asks Power BI license step, they also ask this question, what you are using in your project. This is to check uh, what is your real-time experience if you have or not. That's why this is, uh, they ask it. So mostly whatever you are using that you can tell. So mostly uh, in, in medium-sized projects, Power BI Pro will be used most of the time. So my answer is uh, I, we use Power BI Pro in our project and we use it for sharing reports within the organization. So this you can tell. Based on your experience, whatever you are using, that you can tell. Next, second question is roles in Power BI service. So what are the different roles which are available in Power BI service? So for this, we have four roles, admin, member, contributor, and viewer. So what is admin role? It is Power BI admin role. You have complete access over the workspace. So completely you can uh, create workspace. You can give access to all the people or whoever you want. You can uh, create the content, publish the content. You can manage the reports. You can also delete the workspace. So complete, complete access you have over workspace. Next one is member. Member also have edit, publish and manage report access. They can also uh, access uh, give access to contributor and viewer. They can do that. Next, come uh, coming to contributor, they can edit and publish the content. Okay, then uh, coming to next one is viewer. So what viewer can do? Viewer cannot do anything else except observing the uh, content which is already present. So you can just tell like uh, viewer have only read only access. Okay, then they usually ask what is your role? So for this, you can tell that, uh, yes, um, uh, your role, whatever your role, you can tell that. So mostly Power BI developers have member role or contributor role. Depending on the task and uh, things you are doing, based on that, it will change. So for me, it is member role. So if you are in any lead position or something, then mostly you will have member role. Otherwise, if you are doing only development work and only team member, then mostly you will have contributor role. So whatever is your role, you can tell according to that. My answer is I have member role and I manage reports, schedule data refresh and collaborate. Okay. So if you see, you can also tell if they, if they ask what is the difference between member and contributor, then you can tell that members, they are, it is suitable for team leads or managers because they need to control the access to the workspace and they also need to ensure the collaboration is happening correctly so member role is mostly for team leads or managers and contributor role is for suitable for analysts or developers who need to build and update content but they don't need they don't have much requirement with the permissions or management or access so they usually have contributor so according to that you can tell okay there is no far hard and fast role that you should have only member or contributor role so whatever is your role that you can answer okay next one is how to schedule the refresh so this one, uh, already I have mentioned steps here. You have to just go to the Power BI service. You have to go to the data sets. Then there will be three dots. You have to click on that. Then uh, settings. Then you, ha you have to enable the schedule refresh there. And after enabling, you can mention the frequency. Suppose every 30 minutes or uh, every uh, first, every starting of every month or how many times you want to refresh it. The number of times, frequency, everything you can mention and you can automate it so that in that frequency, data will be updated and the reports will reflect the data. 
okay so this one i have only mentioned theoretical steps here suppose you do not know i'm i'm, uh, I'm thinking that you are already aware of the schedule refresh but if you do not know it and if you want a particular video on this showing demo how to schedule refresh and all then just comment down i will definitely make a video on it how to schedule i'll uh, take the workspace and i'll show you how to set up the schedule refresh those steps i'll manually show okay if you want just comment down otherwise uh, i have already mentioned manual steps here you can answer like this okay next question is on premise data source connection through gateway okay for this what you can do is uh, you have to tell just the steps here uh, how you are setting up the on uh, connection to on premise data source through gateway okay so first you have to install the on premise data gateway then you have to configure it after that you have to add the data source whatever is your data source just add and then map it uh, then you can start using it you can uh, schedule refresh and all using this gateway just explain the steps that's enough Next one is what is gateway and what are its types. So what is gateway? First of all, you have to tell that. What is gateway and what are the types also? So why gateway is used in Power BI first of all? So that it is a bridge that will allow the secure data transfer between the on-premise data source and the Power BI service. On-premise data source, uh, whatever is there, that if you want to uh, transfer the data between on-premise data source to Power BI service. Suppose you already deployed something in the service, but you have on-premise data sources and it, and it is getting updated. So you want to reflect this update update in the uh, reports which are published in the Power BI service. So what you have to do, you have to send the data to the service. So how you are how you will send that you can do using gateway. That is the purpose of the gateway. So just tell gateway is a bridge that will allow secure data transfer between the on-premise data source and the Power BI service. Okay, this much you have to tell and it should be uh, in a proper manner you have to answer it and then uh, what are the types there are two types personal mode and standard mode personal mode is only for uh, your purpose uh, so you can you can install it and you can use it suppose you are creating a report and you want to uh, what is that you if you want to publish it to a service and you want to see how it's working uh, some simply you want to test it in that case it's okay you can use personal mode but otherwise if you're working in an organization definitely you will be using standard mode only because you won't create report for yourself only right you will create it for a, a big organization and for other members so that clients can use it so you have to use enterprise gateway only because it will be used in the organizations so that much you can tell and uh, for this question what you are using in project it is obvious answer uh, you cannot tell you are using personal mode you have to tell that you are using standard mode only and for shared data access and across the teams okay next one is what is the difference between workspace and apps so workspace means uh, you already have idea uh, that is the place where you are going to create the things so it is the collaborative environment and that is the place where you are going to create the reports okay so that is a collaborative environment what is app it is just collection of reports for business users once you create everything report that you will get an option to create app you can just create it that's it okay so this is the difference you can tell uh, in the workspace we develop the report and then after developing you can publish it as app okay that is the thing. Next one is row level security and uh, organizational hierarchy. So why uh, you have row level security so that you have you you can control who can see your data to restrict the data and who can view what data based on that. See whatever report you are creating that will have the whole data. You are suppose you are creating a report for the whole country for in, with the data with India in complete India's uh, data. But if you if you want to send the data to particular people then they do not need complete data they need data which belongs to their area only suppose you have, you have created data for complete uh, india india uh, for each state you have created a report which shows sales for each state but you want to send the report to everyone okay if you are sending it to bangalore uh, bangalore manager and if he want to see only bangalore related data he do not have anything to do with other data so he should not be able to see other data he should be able to see only bangalore related data then you will write the condition and you will restrict it so that he will see only the data which is present in the uh, Bangalore region. So based on the location or based on any criteria, whatever criteria you set according to that, if you restrict the data, then that is that is the purpose of low-level security. Okay. And there are static and dynamic row level security. So for dynamic row level security, you use user principal name. Okay. So for this also, if you want a video, you can comment on. I'll show the demo how to uh, implement static and dynamic row level security. This we can show in the uh, show demo properly if you want. Okay.
So next one is setting up email subscription. How do you set up email subscription? So for this, uh, you have to just go to the Power BI service and you have to go to the report. Then uh, you will have option here, uh, subscribe option. So there you have, if you click it, just you have to add the recipient emails. So whatever is two uh, in the two, you can add the uh, people who all, they should be receiving the emails. They just add the recipient email ID and then set frequency. So at what time, how many time, number, how many number of times they have to receive and all. Then you have to just save and schedule. Then automatically they will get the mails. Okay, that's how you can set. Next one is what is a data flow and why you use it. Okay, so data flow is uh, what is the purpose of data flow? That is one thing. So data flow is uh, usually power query in the cloud. That is what people usually tell. So what they can do is it is a self-service ETL tool and what it will do is it will allow users to collect, clean and transform data from multiple sources. So that is uh, that's what happens in the data flow and uh, why we are using it so that it, we can reduce the redundancy and improve performance. So whenever uh, when there is large data set, then we can use it. OK, and also. Uh, mm, how you will create it is you can go to the Power BI service and there you can select the workspace and create from there. Okay. And uh, you can also tell in your project if you have used it or not, you can tell. So if you, are, if you have not used, you can tell you have basic idea about it and uh, you have not used it up to now. But if you have used, you can also explain the use case. So here I have mentioned that in our project for uh, transactional data sets, we have used it before loading the reports, before loading into reports. So you can tell your project experience if required. Otherwise, just you can tell uh, theoretical knowledge what you have and just tell you you have not used it yet. OK, but uh, this is used when we have large data sets with incremental refresh mostly and also to reduce the redundancy. That is the purpose. OK, next one is deployment pipelines in Power BI. So uh, if you, if this is uh, like, uh, this is also one of the common questions I have seen nowadays. So deployment pipelines in Power BI. So if you haven't heard uh, the, it previously, you might have heard already development, testing, production, these are the teams, but maybe you do not know these are the deployment pipelines. So if they ask, uh, do you know about deployment pipelines? You can tell that, yes, we, we, we have, I know about these things, development, testing and production. And in the development, we develop the reports. In test, we will validate the users and validate reports. And production is where you deploy. So in production, reports go live. That much you can tell. So just uh, deployment pipe pipelines. If they ask, do you, know, do you know about deployment pipelines? Then you can tell that, yes, uh, we have three. And development, testing, and production. So these are the things. Uh, so that much you can tell, OK? That's it, guys. So these are the top 10 Power BI service interview questions. If you need video for any particular topic or if you want demo or anything, comment on. If you have any other requirement, also comment on. Uh, I'll make videos on it for sure. Thank you.